Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dead Reckoning. This is a 1 to 4 player card crafting area movement pirate game. Where you take the role of pirates, you'll be sailing the seas with your crew, trying to control islands, load and spend cargo on advancements and ship upgrades, as well as battling merchant ships or other players, trying to become the best pirate. How do you become the best pirate and win the game? By having the most money at the end of the game. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Dead Reckoning. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the harbor board. Across the top of the harbor board, you have the achievements. These are what trigger the end of the game. Below that are your docks for each player color. And at the bottom, you have the battle bonus. The battleship. These are where you will drop cubes during a battle. Battle board. These have the battle cube resolutions and the rewards in each location. Ocean boards. They are all the same on the back, but on the front you can have either islands or open sea. Open seas will have the coin bonuses for the islands around them. You have the advancement or encounter space. On the island boards, you have the advancement or encounter space. Next to that, you have the name at the top, a depiction underneath, and at the bottom, you have spaces for buildings. And below the buildings are the benefits. Next to that, you have spaces to place influence. At the top of those spaces are the in-game rewards, and at the bottom is the production for that island. And then on the far right is your permanent influence space for when players take control of the island. Row one through four, encounter and advancement decks. Your row number is located in the top right. Next to that row number, you will see the cost. Sleeving advancements or encounters will give you added abilities. The ability will be in the middle of a box, and then on the right of that box indicates the top middle or bottom ability. If it is a merchant ship, then underneath the cost, you would have a battle icon, which indicates if you want to battle the merchant ship, ship upgrade tiles, you have the basic and the advanced. On the front of the tiles, you have benefits on or above the ship and the capacity at the bottom. Bonus achievement tiles, these are your secret goals. Black cubes, these are used for encounters with merchant ships. Damage markers, it takes five damage markers to sink your ship. Buildings, forts, garrisons, and outposts. Cargo tokens in ones and threes. Coins in ones, threes, tens, and thirties. Sleeves, the player components in each player color. Ship board, there are four hole spaces. At the bottom of those spaces have capacities, and those holes can contain cannons or sails. Ship miniature, you have a dock tile. This is your warehouse where you will place cargo, treasure chest, where you will place your coins when you drop them off at the harbor, pirate mode token, 30 cubes, these are used as markers, influence, and battle cubes. Achievement markers, these are to mark the achievements on the harbor board. Sailor illustration cards, at the top you have a depiction and the type of crew member, and the player color is in the top right. Sailor ability cards, these are abilities that will be leveled up, and they can be leveled up one through four. The level is in the bottom left, next to the name, and a depiction of the ability. The next level is located to the right, and a depiction of the next ability. Solo play cards, reference cards for the crew, and the turn. Solo play rulebook, and finally, your rulebook. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three-player game, which takes six steps. Step one, place the harbor board in the center of the play area. Step two, shuffle and place ocean boards. Turn the island boards face down. Shuffle them and select a number based on the number of players. For a two, three, or four-player game, you will select eight, nine, or ten island boards. Then you will add two open sea boards and an additional number based on the number of players to make 12 boards total. Shuffle the ocean boards and place them face down next to the harbor, creating a 3x4 grid. And finally, flip the ocean boards next to the harbor face up. Step 3. Separate, shuffle, and place advancement decks. Separate the advancements by row, shuffle each stack, and place them in their corresponding boxes. You'll place them face up and placed in the box top first. Place the boxes next to the corresponding row of ocean boards from the harbor. Then draw one from row one for each ocean board adjacent to the harbor. Step four, place the ship and supply pools. Place the battleship and battle board next to the play area. Then place supply pools for cargo, coins, black cubes, damage cubes, and buildings within reach of all the players. Step five, get in place player components. Choose a color and get the corresponding treasure chest, cubes, shipboard, dock tile, achievement markers, ship, pirate mode flag, 
reference cards, and sailor deck. The sailor deck consists of a captain, purser, first mate, bosun, buccaneer, two gunners, two deckhands, and three crew. You place the shipboard in the center of your player area with a cube on zero. Place your dock tile below your shipboard, your ship on the harbor, and then place your reference cards, pirate mode flag, cubes, achievement markers, and treasure chest next to the shipboard. Shuffle your sailor cards and place them face down to the left of your shipboard. You'll get 15 in money to place in your treasure chest. Then finally, get two random bonus achievements and keep one and discard the other. Step six, determine the first player and get starting resources. Players will draw four sailor cards and players get a number of cargo based on turn order. The first player will get one, second will get two, third will get three, and fourth will get two and can level up a sailor in their opening hand. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of player turns going clockwise until the final round is triggered, which is when a player places their fourth achievement marker. When that occurs, all the other players will get one last turn and they will go into the final scoring. The achievements. The Explorer. This is achieved when you explore five, four, or three ocean boards for a two, three, or four player game. Master Merchant, which is when you return 12 cargo. Capitalist, this is when you have 30 or more in your treasure chest. Builder, this is when you own five or more buildings. Expert Sailors, this is when you have three level four cards. Elite Vessel, this is when you have four ship upgrades. A Settler, this is when you have six or more permanent cubes. Terror of the Sea, this is when you sink a ship and legendary, when you win four non-building battles. A player's turn. A player's turn consists of two phases. The main phase, where you take all of your actions, and the cleanup, where you will sleeve, draw, and reset the board. Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, the main phase. This is where you will take all of your actions. You can take as many actions as you want unless they are limited. You can also take actions in any order, except the ship movement requires you to set sail first. There are six possible actions. Cargo and coins. You can load, unload, rearrange, and or jettison cargo and coins. For loading, you can load cargo from your dock to your ship if you are at the harbor. And you can also load cargo and coins from an island that you control to your ship if you are on that island. For unloading, you can unload cargo to your dock or coins to your treasure chest when you are in the harbor. You can unload cargo or coins from your ship to an island you're located. If you are at an island with another ship and they are in pirate mode, you cannot load or unload at that island without battling and defeating the ship. Rearranging. You can rearrange cargo and coins on your ship at any time and during other players' turns. The only exception is when you are in battle. You can jettison cargo or coins into the sea at any time except when you are in battle. The second possible action. Play a card from your hand. You can play a card from your hand and use the abilities now, later in your turn, or not at all. The third action, set sails. You can only do this once per turn. You count the number of sails on cards played and icons on your ship if the hull is empty, or you are at the harbor or an island that you control. Then move the cube on the sail track to that number. The fourth type of action is to move your ship. You may move your ship a number of boards by moving your sail track cube down a number equal to the number of boards moved. You can only move orthogonally and the harbor can go to any row of ocean boards. If you stop on an unexplored ocean board, you must explore it. You would flip the ocean board over, draw the top advancement from that row and place it on the ocean board. Keep in mind that you cannot explore more than one per turn. Keep in mind that you must stop on an ocean board if you take an action on that board. If you stop on an ocean board with other ships in pirate mode, you must fight them, even if there are multiple. You would choose the order in which you fight them. The fifth possible action, buy advancements or resolve encounters. If there is an advancement or an encounter on the island board you are located, you can buy it or resolve the card. Advancements get sleeved during the cleanup phase. The only encounters are merchant ships and you can trade or attack which resolves front or the back of the card. You can only encounter two times a turn. And the sixth possible action is use an ability of a played card. You could use an ability from a card that you have played this turn. Now let's look at the card abilities. The anchor symbol references your dock tile or treasure chest. A ship symbol references the holes of your ship. A question mark means that it can be placed or taken from either or split between the ship or dock and treasure chest. Sails, these are for setting sail. A flag with a cube allows you to place influence on an island that you are located. You would place the cube or cubes on the empty slots, and if none are left, you would choose an opponent's cube to be replaced. 
To control an island, you must have more cubes than any other player, and you must have more cubes than there are empty slots. If you take control of the island, you will place an additional cube in the permanent column. Production. This is the gear symbol. This allows you to produce on an island. You would produce the bottom right resource and open seas add one. It also produces another resource of each for an outpost that's built. Draw, which is your card symbol. You would draw an extra card at the end of this turn. Construct a building. These have costs, an arrow, and then the type of building. You would remove buildings when island control changes. For forts, the other players cannot interact with the island without an override fort ability, and it has five cubes when attacked. Garrisons, these give one damage token to any opponent ship entering this ocean board, and gets two cubes when attacked. Outposts, these produce more on this island board. Attack flag, this allows you to attack a ship on your space. Cannon, this adds one cube in battle. Battle abilities, these have the word battle and are used during a battle. The wheels, these are used and are referenced on other cards. Your upgrades, the saw is basic and the saw and hammer are advanced. This allows you to upgrade a hull to your ship. Repair damage, this has a fire and X and you would remove a damage cube from your shipboard. And in game scoring is in purple. When battling, this can be player versus player, player versus merchant ship, or player versus buildings. For the players versus the merchant ship, or an encounter, you would carry out this battle in five steps. Step one, take battle cubes. You'll get your cubes equal to the number of cannons, or your battle ability, on cards and hulls. You will get black cubes equal to the black encounter number on the back of the merchant ship. Step two, drop the battle cubes in the battleship all at once. Any exploding shots or the orange exploding cube, you will drop again with an additional cube of that color. You will repeat this process until none are in the exploding cube zone. Step three, resolve battle abilities. You'll use your battle abilities in any order. And step four, resolve the battleship. Collect your plunder in a hull on your ship. Give damage tokens to the opposing ship. Determine the winner, which are the most crowns, or if tied, the active player would win. And then step five, determine the outcome. You'll apply effects on the back of the card. Then you'll place a cube on the legendary achievement if you won the battle. Keeping in mind that a ship with five or more damage sinks. For player versus player, you would carry out five steps. Step one, take battle cubes. The active player collects cubes and the inactive player plays cards from their hand. If on an island board a player controls, you will add one for each building. If defending in the harbor, you would add four. The defending players can use the cannon until the end of their next turn. Step two, drop the cubes. Step three, resolve battle abilities, taking turns with the active player first. Step four, resolve the battleship. Step five, determine the outcome. The loser would get one damage token and the winner will place a cube on the legendary achievement. Keeping in mind that five or more damage sinks a ship. Player versus buildings. This is carried out in five steps. Step one, take the battle cubes. Five for a fort and two for a garrison. Step two, drop the cubes. Step three, resolve battle abilities. Step four, resolve the battleship, keeping in mind that buildings do not plunder. And step five, determine the outcome. If a player gets five or more damage tokens, their ship sinks. When your ship sinks, you would move the ship back to the harbor. You would lose all of your coins if you had more than five. And if you had less than five, you would lose five from your treasure chest. You will set your sail to zero and set merchantile mode for your ship. If a player caused this, they would get to place the coins in their treasure chest and place an achievement marker on the sunk ship achievement. Once you've taken all the actions on your turn, you would move to phase two, the cleanup phase. This is carried out in five steps. Step one, refill advancements or encounters. You'll draw a card from that row deck for each empty ocean board. If the row box is empty, you'll take the top card from the row higher. Step two, choose to be in pirate mode or mercantile mode. Mercantile mode is default. If you are not in the harbor, you can switch to pirate mode. When you switch to pirate mode, you would put the flag tile on your ship. And if you are in pirate mode in the harbor, you must change to mercantile mode. If a player stops on your ocean board while in pirate mode, they must battle your ship. Step three, reset your sail track to zero. Step four, sleeve advancements. You may sleeve any advancements that you have. When sleeving, you can only sleeve cards that you played this turn. You can't cover an advancement and you can sleeve multiple in the same card. Keeping in mind that you can't use the ability the same turn that you sleeve it. And you can only save one advancement unless you can't sleeve them. And then step five, discard and draw. Place all played cards in your discard. Draw up to four cards with a hand limit of six plus one on islands you control, add to the hand limit. 
the draw icon played this turn increases your draw number. Then it would become the next player's turn. Before the start of your next turn, you can level up one Sailor card in your hand. Player turns continue until a player places their fourth achievement marker. This starts the final round and all other players will get one last turn. In the final round, you need two place influence to replace an opponent's cube. And if a player is done and attacked, they get two battle cube. Once players take their final turn, we go to the final scoring. The final scoring takes seven steps. Step one, achievements. Gain coins for the achievements. Step two, treasure, island, and ship coins. You would add your total treasure chest, island, and ship coins. Step three, buildings. Gain one coin for each building you control. Step four, advancements. Score one for every two advancements. Step five, ship upgrades. Score one for basic and two for advanced ship upgrades. Step six, end of game advancement. Gain your end of game purple advancement rewards. And step seven, score influence for each island board. The most cubes on an island will get the top number, the second most would get the second largest number, and the third would get the third largest number. If two or more players are tied, they would score the next value down. And if players are tied for third, no reward would be given. Then once the players total their coins, the player with the most coins is the best pirate and wins Dead Reckoning.